But before that, I will screenshot it so that we have the... Just wait for a minute. Okay, I'll now be sharing my screen so that we could understand each other. So we are now in the module nine of our book, which is entitled Writing Short Fiction. So our targets are, number one is to develop our own writing rituals and habits. Second, express our opinions confidently. Third, nurture and develop my own, our own writing voice and personal style. Fourth, research and identify real life writing resources and opportunities. Fifth, analyze and criticize your own work and then produce a completed full short story or a collection of flash fiction. So that's the things that we're going to cover for module nine. Okay. Your youth and childhood. So that's the first subtopic actually. It says here that there are many ways to kill a cat, as many as the ways to write a story. Do you believe so? So just uh, strike the thumbs button or like button to your account so that I could know if you're still there. Okay. You can write a story any way you want. Or you can try this little workshop. So I will not be really giving you the workshop right now because of limited time. But you have also this activity in your in the PDF I was able to send to you through our GC. Okay, that's your youth and childhood. So the coming age story. Okay, from the title alone. Coming of, coming of age story is a hero's journey from being a child to being an adult. Another term, it is a journey that takes your character from being naive to being wise, from idealistic to realistic, from immature to mature. There is usually suffering and pain, but in the end, your hero loses his childhood innocence, grows up learning from his or her experiences and directed to adulthood. So I believe that each one of us here right now went already through those stages. That's why we are now considered adult or young adult. So if you have the, the what do you call this? Extra time later, you can read this stories like the growing pains of Adrian and the catcher in the ride. Okay. Those are some examples of coming of coming of age story stories. So a short story cycle, aka story sequence is a collection of standalone stories, which means that each story has a beginning, middle, and conclusion that are composed and arranged with the goal of creating a different experience when they are read as a group, as opposed to being read individually. Okay, we could think of 1001 Nights and the Canterbury Tales. So write in a totally emotional way. Do not be afraid of what you are writing or of your past. Do not hide in strange language nor worry about how other people will see you or will look at you. Put your heart on the page. Take the risk of being disliked. Tell the truth as you understand the truth will find an echo in some reader's heart and they'll thank you for saying exactly what I wanted to say. 
Yes, you will write fiction, but your feelings and sentiments should be true. If you cannot write with sincerity, your readers will notice. Or you can write with humor, write about painful things, your abuse, your poverty, etc. in a funny way, like make them laugh, but also pinch your readers' little heart. Nobody wants a sad, sad story. Nobody wants you whining all the time. Sure. You were bullied, but now is your chance to get back at that bully. Make him the laughing stock of your story. Make those who bullied you with the physical strength be bullied now by your cleverness. Show your readers that the little pigs cannot outwit the big bad wolf. Okay, now let's proceed to the outlining part. <laughs> Excuse me. You're, you heard it said that for our left brain, normally we have this, the logic, what else? The practicality, the order, and accuracy. And that is mostly the function of our left brain, the left portion or the head, the left portion of our brain while when we say right brain it is more on creativity passion and imagination okay so that's actually the difference between the left and right part of our brain Hmm, that's a my personal habits. Okay, sorry. Ah, okay. Never mind the personal habits of successful writers. So let's take example with this. When you write your stories, use your whole brain. Okay, we should use our whole brain. Do you really want a half brain story? Like for example, here printed on our screen, the blue pigs are flying, okay? It's a beautiful whimsical statement, okay? When you say whimsical statement subject to erratic behavior or unpredictable change. But if it is not in context, it is not true. If it is not true, why should your readers bother? Okay, that's a very striking statement, right? So why they bother to read your story if they are not true? Okay, so some people dive into story writing about writing without planning. If you can do that and produce great results, that's awesome. If you're not that time, you can be helped by plotting or outlining. Very, very short stories may not need much planning. If you're stuck or you hit at a dead end by your 128 word, you can just discard your story and start again. But if you are writing a 7,500 word story, would you really like to start all over again from the very beginning when you hit a dead end by your 4,999 word? Wouldn't you rather have planned your writing journey, made a map so you don't get lost? That's the value of an outline. It's like a map that charts your journey even before you write the first sentence. It's very helpful if you are embarking on a big writing project like an epic or a novel or even just a short story of over 3,000 words. Doesn't outlining feel creativity? Again, be reminded that originality and creativity is all in the plot. And maybe you'll soon discover writing is all in the manner of saying. Okay. Okay. For right brain, we have the germinal stage. Like for example, in the process of growing, especially seeds, there is what we call germination first, right? And in order for the seed to germinate, there are really factors to consider. 
Okay, that's also true in writing fiction or short stories. Okay, in that germinal idea or germinal stage, you should have a vision. <coughs> Excuse me. An image, a character, wherein you, sh you should conceptualize your story. That's under the right brain because we have the creativity, the passion, and the imagination. How about for left brain? So for your left brain, after the germination stage or germinal stage, so you can now supply the missing links, fill in the gaps. Like you should consider this, the, the question, why is the character going to do that? Okay, or what will she do next? What happened to him before this? That's why you should plot out your story or outline it. Okay, that's for left brain because left brain centered on logic, practicality, order, and accuracy. Again, we go back to right brain. <coughs> After the, uh, supplying the missing links, then you can write beautifully because one of the main thing the right brain can do is creativity. Describe how she walks in beauty, like the night in that, that, that. Okay, then you can continue that. Write with the passion for words. Go crazy with your imagination. Okay. Okay, so go crazy when you say go crazy. It's not just like that's a whole time. Okay, that's a whole time experience, but rather that moment only. Okay, when you try to imagine things. Okay, and for the left brain, going back to our left brain, after you write beautifully, you can now review it, revise it, and edit it. So clean up, mop up, mop up the excess. Make things sound convincing. Things should make sense. They should be true in the literal sense too. So you are now ready to write your short story or story cycle of five flash fiction for the culminating output. Nervous? Don't be. You have the, this week until the middle of the next week to finish and evaluate it. So remember the PS and approach to writing in module four? If you still believe it, you may visit. You may just follow the prompts. Again, make your choice now. Whichever way you want to do this, just make sure that you produce the short story or the story cycle by the end of this unit. Just do it. See you at the finish line. So let's try to remember or to recall the seven point seven points Peter Solis scenario approach to writing or the PSN to writing. So the first to consider is the character or the characters. Choose flawed character and modify as you need. Or create your own. A hair-lipped girl, mm -hmm. a cross-eyed boy, someone with a limp, someone gay or a tomboy in a close-minded society. Shal, albino, mute, deaf, teenage, werewolf, vampire, retarded, mm -hmm. ice queen, ugly duckling, drama queen, anyone with defense. Yeah. Flaws can be physical, emotional, psychological, mental, and whatever you want. Sure, you can mix match and make your own character combo. A shy, hair-lipped, cross-eyed teenage bomba? Why not? Flaws can also show from her needs or his weakness. The Little Mermaid's weakness is inexperience. So if you are to look back to the story, The Little Mermaid, Actually, there are many adaptations nowadays. So what was her, what do you call that? Flaw. Okay, she was an experience. That's why she needs to listen to good advice. The beast weakness is ignorance. He needs to show love. Simba's weakness is guilt. He needs to forgive himself for his father's death. 
but please do not let the hero be aware of her need in the beginning of the story or else the story is over. Let the need be understood in the enlightenment section right around the big five, say page nine or 10 or your 12 page story. It's about word 200 or 225 of your 250 word story. That's about the character. Next is the desire. Give your flawed character an intense design, a goal in the story, a date with the opposite sex, perhaps, to be proven correct that she has invented a magic formula to change a prince into a punk, get father to believe in him, or it can be as simple as getting ice cream for his birthday. Ugly duckling wants to belong. Poor Cinderella wants to go to the ball. Beast wants to be a human again. Little Mermaid wants the prince. Bumper wants Bella. Lirio the mute wants to be other than herself. Padre Olan wants reign or control. Understand that desire is not the same as need. Need is what the character wants in life. Desire is what the character wants in the story. Thus, Beast desires to be human again, but his real life need is to show love. Purple Cat desires to be friends with Blue Crane. Maybe have a date, who knows? But Purple Cat's true need is acceptance. So maybe the cross-eyed boy wants to correct his strabismus, so that's need. But in your story, he just wants a date with a hair lip teenage vampire girl, so that's already the desire. Whatever you do, don't skip this part, differentiating true need and desire. Okay, third, opponent. Give your flawed character a worthy opponent, someone or something that prevents him from achieving his desire. Wait, can you make that crazier and make the opponent compete with your character for the same goal? Popeye, or when I was still a child, Popeye. <laughs> I normally read, read it as Popeye or Popeye. Desires olive oil. Guess what? Brutus or Bluto wants her too. Cinderella wants to dance with the prince. Guess what? Her sisters want to. And stepmother is going to make sure her daughters get a chance, even if it means locking up Cinderella. But the Olan wants to be proven right that God's arm cannot be twisted by our prayers. Guess what? All his parishioners and even the good archbishop want to be proven right too, that God hears the cry of his people. Simba has uncle's car to contend with for the throne. The beast has the most admired perfect paragon Gaston competing for Belle. And well, your shy, hair-lip albino, seventh grade gay boy, has a worthy opponent in the drop dead gorgeous 10th grade cheerleader wanting the same tall, dark, and handsome star basketball varsity player in grade 12. You still need more ideas for your opponents. There are teachers, school bullies, sisters, gorgeous sisters, ugly stepsisters, big bad boy, wolf in a ship's clothing, strict parents, rich chick boy with a car, and money for hair gem. Evil magician, backstabbing friends, mix match, modify, create your own villains, and Prada wearing Cruella de Vils. Okay, the fourth one is plan. Now let the fun begin by making your tactical plan. Make a series of unfortunate events. Build up. This build up can run from page three to page nine or 10 of your 12 page story. It can eat up a total of maybe 180 to 200 words of your 250 word flash fiction. It's harder to chart flash fiction, but you get the idea. How do you fill out the bulk section of your story? Strategize to reach the character's goal and equally important, plan to defeat the opponent. See how the story Father Olan, God and Ray use several opponents, Don Beato, the KFC, 
the women's groups, fathers, priests, archbishop, angel, even God. All that to complicate and to pull the story's three word theme, God answers prayers. If the beast's real need is to show love and Bell is the goal to prove it, review his long winding practical strategy. A library because she likes books, a dinner with dancing dishes, ballroom dancing, letting her go home as a look to the familiar love thing. If you love somebody, you have got to set her free. Totally giving up by not fighting back the town's fox attack on the palace and then changing his mind. A battle with a handsome businessman. Looking at Belle's eyes one last time for the dramatic effect. Now, if it uses one page per event, that's already seven pages right there. Anyway, for your shy boy to get the prettiest girl to the JS prom, he needs to get a tuxedo. Reader's love a cross-eyed boy in tuxedo. It's extraordinary. Barrow or steel? His bully big brother's motorbike? Oh, he forgot a corsage for her. And the flower shops are all closed now. So he calls his fairy godmother. Fairy godmother has the flu, but he has a new best friend, the mute girl, Lerio, who asked for the direction somewhere in the first or second paragraph when you were establishing that your shy boy, Hero, has a heart of gold despite his cross eyes. It turns out Lerio has magical powers to transform herself into a lily. So he rides the bike with a lily corsage, hits a traffic jam for three hours, and traffic finally moved. He ran out of gas, so he ran all the way to the girl's house. And upon reaching it, he was told that she waited for a long time. So finally, she left with a rich chick boy vampire. They just left in the bumper's limousine, so he ran again, all the way to the ball, and so on, and so forth. But that's the plan. The fifth to consider is the fight, the big fight. Everything so far has led you to this point. You don't need any major prompt here. The big fight can be a battle of words, or it can come to blows. It can be violent on paper here. Punch her, shoot team, stab her kick him, pour acid over her face, or smother him with kisses. How you personally, individually, uniquely deal with the big fight scene makes you an original writer. All your classmates may have chosen and uh, written about the same characters. But starting from the tactical plan up to this big fight, you are making your own original story. You are original. Stand up to the challenge and your title as an original thinker. Thinker. Be creative. Be a real creative writer. Okay. Enlightenment. Then whether your hero is on the ground collecting his broken teeth or crying in a corner with her big blood-stained prom dress, let there be light. Er, let there be enlightenment. Let your character realize something about his or her weakness and need. Actually, win or lose in the big fight, your hero must realize something. He gets what he wants and is up happy. She gets what she wants but is not happy. He doesn't get what he wants but is happy. She doesn't, she doesn't get what she wants and is not happy. That's four more possible is right there to differentiate your story from your classmates. So the beast got stabbed to death by Gaston. He knows that he won't get Belle. It's a mortal wound and he'll die a beast. But he learned something. Maybe it's better this way, he says. Or your shy boy gets back his pretty girl at the prom and he realizes, I'm still cross-eyed, but physical defects are not a hindrance to success and happiness. Or it can go another way. I'm cross-eyed, I didn't get the prettiest girl. Maybe I should set on my sight and focus my vision on the hairy girl over there in the corner. Ah, too many options. And the last one is the reorientation. Finally, try to get back to a new normal. A reorientation. If you're not for happy endings, let the beast die for good. No transformations. Belle gets on with her life, finds a new boyfriend. Tragic for the beast, yes, but at least he realized something good. He'll learn to really love before he died. 
or understanding that life won't change if his eye condition won't change. Cross-eyed boy becomes okay with it and decides he will not join the army anymore or go for the happy ending. It's your story. Okay, so for the flash fiction, so if you have chosen the micro story cycle option, you can still use the seven point plotting technique of PSN pro PSN approach. But your stories are just a little difficult to chart because you don't want predictability in the shorter forms. You don't want to use a formula. What you want is the element of surprise. Okay, and maybe I will be presenting the sample for this flash fiction. Okay, I will just capture it through my phone and send it to you. Okay. So it says in Romans 15 verse 4 that for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance thought and the scriptures and encouragement, they provide we might have hope. Okay. So that, I think that's the last part.